Historical accounts of poltergeist hauntings usually raise scepticism due to poor evidence and the embellishments of time. However, this astonishing story was researched to the hilt in its day. On February 20th, 1938, the British Sunday pictorial newspaper unusually carried a report of a haunting in Thornton Heath, Croydon. A 34-year-old housewife had contacted the news desk to tell them about strange occurrences at the home she shared with her husband Les, their son Don and their lodger George Saunders. Alma Fielding implored the newspaper to send a reporter to document bizarre events she could not explain. The Victorial dispatched two journalists to Thornton Heath. As Alma opened the front door to the pair, they observed an egg flying down the corridor to land at their feet. As she showed them to the kitchen, a pink china dog hurtled to the floor and a sharp-bladed can opener sliced through the air at head height. In the front parlour, a teacup and saucer rose out of Alma's hands while she sat with her guests, the saucer spinning and shattering with a ping as if shot in mid-air. Alma shrieked as a second saucer exploded in her fingers and cut into her thumb. As her wound was being bandaged, the group heard a crash in the kitchen. A wine glass had seemingly leapt from a locked cabinet and smashed on the floor. They observed another egg to spin in through the living room door and crack against the sideboard. A large chunk of coal arose from the grate, coasted across the room inches from the head of one of the journalists and crashed into the wall. It was as if the Fielding's house were under siege from itself. While Les, Don and George were at home, as far as the reporters could discern, none of them was responsible for the phenomena. The objects were propelled by an invisible force and included flying crockery, a radio that smashed itself onto the floor, and a wardrobe that repeatedly plunged onto her son's bed. Other objects called apports materialised from thin air and included pieces of jewellery and live creatures such as beetles, birds and terrapins. The pictorial published its article the next morning, accompanied by the headline this is the most curious front page story we have ever printed. It declared that, inside an ordinary terrace house in Croydon, some malevolent ghostly force was performing miracles. The only explanation was known as a poltergeist, from the German noisy spirit, with spirituals claiming that the events are all caused by mischievous earthbound spirits. In 2017, Guardian reporter Kate Summerscale visited the Society for Psychical Research archive in Cambridge to research the Thornton Heath haunting. She knew that the psychoanalyst come ghost hunter Nandor Fodor had investigated the case of Elmer Fielding and the claimed poltergeist, and his dossier had remarkably been preserved. A manila folder held transcripts of Fodor's interviews and seances with Elmer, laboratory reports, x-rays, copies of contracts, rough notes, sketches, and photographs of the damage inflicted by the poltergeist on Elma's house and her own person. A Jewish-Hungarian emigre, Fodor had initially immersed himself in the 1930s supernatural scene, joining the Ghost Club and London Spiritualist Alliance and collaborating with the Fairy Investigation Society. At the time, spiritualism was a well-respected industry in Britain. After the huge loss of life in the First World War and 1980 influenza pandemic, thousands of spiritualist seance groups had been established by the bereaved. Arthur Conan Doyle proclaimed that the faith offered a breaking down of the walls between this world and the next, providing hope and guidance during those troubled times. Effectively, a seance was a voluntary haunting where ghosts were summoned and the deceased could speak through mediums, rap on tables, and sometimes even be seen, touched, or smelt. Fodor had predicted that soon psychic communication would be understood and as easily used as the wireless and telephone. However, Fodor, having studied the work of Sigmund Freud, became increasingly skeptical about spiritualism and pondered the question whether supernatural phenomena may actually be created by the unconscious minds of the living. He decided that Elmer Fielding was the perfect subject for testing his theories. 
Fodor invited Alma to the International Institute for Psychical Research to undergo a series of tests and investigations. In a tightly controlled situation, Alma was strip-searched before being sewn into a kind of body stocking. However, she continued to manifest bizarre phenomena while observed by Fodor. A diamante brooch materialized from thin air, followed by an ancient oil lamp, and creatures such as a white mouse, scarab beetle, and Javanese sparrow. Alma appeared capable of astral projection and open to spirit possession. To assess her ambient phenomena, Photo used all the modern methods available – voice recording, telephones, cameras, x-rays, chemical tests, hypnosis, and word association studies. He collected witness statements, analysed Alma's dreams, and had investigators track her movements. At one stage, Fodor took Alma and four members of the Institute on a day trip to Bognor Regis. Alma agreed to test if her poltergeist could spirit a ring from the local Woolworth store. After selecting her ring of choice, Alma returned it to the shop assistant, saying that she did not want to buy it today. The group left the store, but as they turned into a nearby road, Alma said that she heard a rattle in the box she was carrying. Fodor took the box from her and, opening it, found the ring she had handled. He said his flesh crawled while all the investigators were staggered, swearing that they had seen the ring still on the jewellery counter as they left. Alarmed, Fodor stated that they had committed psychic shoplifting. However, according to Summerscale's research, evidence began to mount that Alma was actually an accomplished performance artist who could hide objects in her body cavities or flick them to fly through the air. Fodor nevertheless decided that Alma sometimes faked phenomena so as to retain the researcher's interest, and had no doubt that her terror at the original poltergeist activity was genuine. His psychological studies had convinced him that, as the door to the unconscious swings open, a suppressed feeling can escape its human host in material form. He theorised that mediums discharge electromagnetic rays like cobwebs, strange unknown forces. Fodor observed that Alma often seemed detached from herself when a strange event occurred, and he wondered if the suppressed emotions of her buried life surged to the surface and broke out. Perhaps mental dissociation from her menial life had manifested in her supernatural tricks. The American writer Charles Fort observed that poltergeists often emanate from people who have no direct power women, servants, adolescents, and children. Summerscale suggests that Alma's haunting, like many supernatural events of the 30s, was a blowout of both national and personal fear. The Poltergeist article of February 20, 1938, shared the front page of the Sunday pictorial with a huge photograph of a shouting Adolf Hitler with the headlines, Ghost Wrecks Home and Family Terrorised. Every week, the press was carrying warnings about the enemy's belligerence and accounts of the British government's desperate attempts to strengthen the country's defences. The dread of war threatened all. Alma's husband, Les, had sustained injuries in World War I and he still awoke in terror from trench dreams. Their only child, Don, was likely to be called up to serve in the next conflict. Alma herself had been through the mill, with lost babies and a mastectomy in her past, and now in a seemingly loveless marriage. Fodor's intensified surveillance of her sought to also unearth any childhood trauma that might have explained her poltergeist. He had concluded that repressed memories in themselves could generate terrifying physical manifestations. On learning of his findings regarding Alma's haunting, Fodor's colleagues expelled him from the International Institute in 1938, confiscating his papers, which were later sourced by Summerscale. Although she found some of his invasive research methods troubling, she respected his refusal to condemn Alma as either unbalanced or a fraud. By 1958, when Fodor's book about the Thornton Heath poltergeist was published, most scientific thinkers had debunked psychical research. However, his ideas about poltergeist psychosis quickly found their way into fiction and horror cinema. 
To the question of whether Alma's poltergeist was real or fantasized, a product of her own mind or supernatural, the answer offered by some scale is both. We still underestimate the power of a forcefully repressed emotion which seems able to take on an uncanny life of its own in the form of a highly disruptive ghost.